I promise you now, this cooking video is going to be unlike any mummy cooking video that you've ever seen. We're going to attempt to make the hummingbird cake that we... Well, no, not the hummingbird cake, because I have absolutely no idea how they did it. But a cake similar to the hummingbird cake that they made at Briddlesford that we liked so much. So the first thing I did was forget to buy butter and then measure out the only bit of margarine that we had left, which came to six ounces. So our cake recipe is based entirely on the fact that we had six ounces of margarine. So that's where we're starting. Six ounces of margarine and then brown sugar. I wanted brown normal sugar, but I couldn't get any. So this is the soft brown sugar to hopefully give it the brown colour. But I don't know if that'll make the cake all saggy and horrible. So we'll see. Put the six ounces of margarine and the six ounces of sugar into the bowl and then whisk, blend. Don't know what the word is. Use the thing that makes it mix together until you get to something like that. For six ounces, I'm going to put three normal size eggs in. I was told to whisk, mix, beat. Still don't know the word. The last egg in with a spoonful of flour. So that's what I'm going to do, whether it's right or not. I then mashed two bananas. Decided that didn't look like enough. Tried to mash a third banana, half of which fell on the floor. So that's two and a half bananas have gone in. And I'm going to whisk, beat, mix that in too. I didn't really think how else to get the pineapple in. So I opened a tin of pineapple chunks, which looked suspiciously too big. So I chopped them into quarters, but only that little top amount of them. And there's that many in there which looks suspiciously like it's curdled, but I don't think that's the right word. Suspiciously like it's not right and a very little bit like sick. But we're going to push on anyway. With a normal cake, you would usually put six ounces of flour in, but because it's had the bananas and the pineapple, I decided to put some more in because it looked a bit sloppy. So I've got seven ounces in there to go in and then I had the spoonful that I put in with the egg. So we'll see how that goes. Now, once you put the flour in, you should always fold in gently with a spoon. But I doubt that anyone that is properly serious about baking is still watching by now. And I ran out of time and energy and I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work anyway. So I whisk, mix, beat, thingied it and it now looks like that. I'm going to put it in cake tins. I then lined my tins with a mixture of the last of the margarine and a little bit of oil because I'd run out of enough margarine to really do the job um, and lined with greaseproof paper squares because by now I lost the ability to cut circles or the will to live so that's what it looks like. And blobbed it in half each and turned it into what looks like flat sick in bowls and I'm going to put it in the oven for, I don't know how long. Let's face it, I'm winging it here. I've got no idea. Um, for some amount of time until it looks cooked, I'll tell you later, um, at 160 degrees. I cook them until when you pull on this bit, they come away from the side and they feel like cake. And put them on a wire baking tray to cool down so that we can do the filling and the topping. They don't look very thick. I think if I'd have had more butter or margarine I would have made more but if you only have six ounces that's what they look like. I would like to say that I know how to make cream cheese icing frosting but I don't so I'm using this which came from Sainsbury's or Tesco. Um, looks quite squishy so should be able to go straight on. So this is our final cake and it has some sprinkly stuff on the top because there was some sprinkly stuff on the top in the cafe someone suggested that it might have been cinnamon so I've sprinkled cinnamon on the top and it's a bit patchy and I've also sprinkled cinnamon on the top of the cooker but that's fine this is our finished cake and we will see what we think of it really because I'm not holding out much hope I'm afraid it's actually surprisingly good it tastes more like banana cake than anything and I'm not entirely sure that I can call it hummingbird cake but it is hummingbird cake inspired 
and it's made something that is in fact quite edible and really fairly pleasant um how long did i cook it for i think i cooked it for about 35 minutes whether or not that's right i don't know um but it doesn't taste too bad the edges are a little tiny bit crunchy so maybe 30 minutes depends on your oven and your skill and the thickness of your cake but that wasn't too far off and yeah it's not been too bad if you liked this or any others please subscribe for more because we really enjoy doing this <laughs> whether or not we're helpful i don't know but we're having a great time and thank you to all my subscribers and feel free to join us